today's video, I'd just like to share that 94% of my viewers aren't subscribed. So if you are feeling generous, be sure to drop a like and a sub, and let's get right into today's video. Thank you. Howdy, I'm Daxio, and this is Plugged In News. And in today's pin update, we have some updates from the drone, the U.S. drone strike that took out the suicide bomber that attacked the gates at the Kabul airport. Um, so let's get into these stories. So for the first story, it is Taliban members escorted Americans to gates at Kabul airport in secret arrangement with the U.S., as well as they are so burned that we cannot identify their bodies, grieving relatives, fury over... U.S. drone strike targeting ISIS-K that killed six children, including two toddlers, age two and four adults. And for the last story, it is judge changes course after ruling Chicago mom with shared custody can't visit her son until she gets the COVID-19 vaccine. Now let's get right into that. And for the first story today, this is coming from CNN Politics by Barbara Starr, and it is Taliban members escorted Americans to gates at Kabul airport in secret arrangement with U.S. And this will kind of lead on to the other story, so let's get right into that. The U.S. military negotiated a secret arrangement with the Taliban that resulted in members of the militant group escorting clusters of Americans to the gates of the Kabul airport as they sought to escape Afghanistan, two defense officials told CNN. One of the officials also revealed that U.S. Special Operations Forces set up a secret gate at the airport and established call centers to guide Americans through the evacuation process. The officials said Americans were notified to gather at preset muster points close to the airport where the Taliban would check their credentials and take them a short distance to a gate manned by American forces who were standing by to let them inside amid huge crowds of Afghans seeking to flee. The U.S. troops were able to see the Americans approach with their Taliban escorts as they progressed through crowds, presumably ready to intervene in case anything happened. The officials spoke on the condition of anonymity due to the sensitivity of their arrangements, which have not been disclosed until now because the U.S. was concerned about the Taliban reaction to any publicity as well as a threat of ISIS-K attacks if its operatives have realized Americans were being escorted in groups, the officials said. The ISIS offshoot, a sworn enemy of the Taliban, claimed responsibility for the suicide attack at the gate on the Kabul airport last week that killed 13 American service members and 170 more Afghans. The Taliban escort missions happen several times a day, according to one of the officials. One of the key muster points was a Ministry of Interior building just outside the airport's gates, where nearby U.S. forces were readily available to observe the Americans' approach. Americans were notified by various messages about where to gather. It worked. It worked beautifully, one, uh, one official said of the arrangement as of Monday, when the U.S. completed its withdrawal. More than 122,000 people in total have been airlifted from Hamid Karazi Airport since July, and more than 6,000 American civilians have been evacuated. Now, last week, they told us that around 15,000 Americans were still there. So that means if only 6,000 Americans were evacuated, apparently, allegedly, it was like 10,000 to 15,000 Americans were still there. And if only 6,000 Americans were evacuated, that still means that there's at least maybe three to 4,000 Americans there at minimum. And yet, um, our general and Joe Biden saying, oh, there's only 100 Americans there and they just want to stay there and stuff like that. I have a feeling that that just might not be the case. Um, but we'll find out. Now, this story leads into the next story because it is about the the, su the car suicide bombers from ISIS-K and that drone strike that I reported on around two days ago. And this is, they are burned. They are so burned, we cannot identify their bodies. Grieving relatives, fury over U.S. drone strike targeting ISIS-K that killed six children, including two toddlers, age two and four adults. And from reading this, it doesn't really sound like the U.S. might have gotten their man. It sounds like... They might have attacked someone completely wrong. So it's it's really bad. Grieving relatives have hit out or have hit out after a US drone strike near Kabul airport killed ten people from the same family, including six children. Six children. The innocent civil if if this if Donald Trump was president right now, this would be blowing up all over the news. They'd be calling him a child murderer, etc. etc. Yet it's not happening. And it goes on to read, the innocent civilians were killed when a car parked outside their home was hit by the drone strike on Sunday, which was targeting a vehicle 
thought to be carrying a member of ISIS-K, the Islamic State affiliate responsible for the Kabul airport terror attack just days ago. Why have they killed our family, our children? They are so burned we cannot identify their bodies, their faces. Anguished relative Brahim Yousafi told BBC reporters through tears. Yousafi vilified the U.S. strike as a brutal attack which happened based on the wrong information. Zemurai Ahamidi, 36, was killed alongside his sons Zamir, Fasal, and Farzard, aged 20, 16, and 12 respectively, while Imal Amahadi said his two-year-old daughter Malika Amahadi also died. Six of Zamari's nieces and nephews were also killed, a boy and a girl both aged two years old, girls aged five and seven, and a six-year-old boy and a 28-year-old man. Meanwhile, Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby said U.S. authorities were not in a position of dispute uh, to dispute reports of civilian casualties, but assured the press had no military on the face of the earth, or assured to the press no military on the face of the earth works harder to avoid civilian casualties than the United States military, and nobody wants to see innocent lives taken. The U.S. has. Definitely. That, I mean, it happens. It, it happens. It may not be intentional, but the U.S. has been killing citizens, innocent civilians, since the start of us and colonization. Um, I bet the U.S. is up there in ranks with some of the worst armies and worst groups, terrorist groups in the world, because we sit there and we're America, or the world's police force, and we spread out all over the world and t try and put our infrastructure in all these countries and stuff and start wars and start conflicts that are not needed and a bunch of civilians end up dying because of it whether it's our fault or theirs we're in that war causing it to happen more it's it's never going to end violence is never the answer it's never the solution guys um yeah a, a terrible story all right and for the last story today this is a judge changes course after ruling Chicago mom with shared custody can't visit her son until she gets the COVID-19 vaccine. And this is by Katie Balovic, and this is coming from Yahoo Entertainment. And it, it turns out to be a pretty decent story, uh, pretty happy. It's pretty scary at first, not gonna lie. You'll, you'll see right now as I read. A Chicago judge changed course after he ruled that a mother with shared custody of her son could not see the boy until she was vaccinated against COVID-19. After a few weeks passed and the mom filed an appeal, the judge vacated his earlier decision. Earlier this month, Rebecca Furlitt went to virtual court with her ex-husband to discuss child support. Instead, Cook County Judge James Shapiro asked about Furlitt's vaccination status, the Chicago Sun-Times reported. One of the first things he asked me when I got into the Zoom call was whether or not I was vaccinated, which threw me off because I asked him what it had to do with the hearing, Furlitt 39 told the newspaper. Furlitt's ex-husband and son's father, Matthew Doivin, is vaccinated. The Sun's Times reported Furlitt is not. Shapiro prohibited Furlitt from seeing her 11-year-old son until she gets vaccinated against COVID-19. Shapiro did not immediately respond to the insider's request for comment. Furlitt filed an appeal but could only speak with her son over the phone in the meantime. She hasn't said whether she'll get vaccinated, the Washington Post reported. On Monday, Shapiro changed his mind, allowing Furlitt to see her son in person, Furlitt's attorney told WFLD. The number of children hospitalized for COVID-19 has risen to peak levels in the U.S., NBC News reported. Data from earlier this month showed hospitals were treating over 1,200 children a day on average. The COVID-19 vaccines are not are only authorized in the U.S. for children 12 and up, so at 11, Furlitt's son is too young to get one himself. So, good news, she can talk to her son again without having to get the vaccine. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw in another story that she has a medical exemption, which her doctor told her that she probably shouldn't get the vaccine and it wouldn't be good for her health. Yet, this judge wants to come in here and tell her that she can't see her son because of a medical exemption. Because of a medical exemption. Anyways, if you do want to get vaccinated, make sure you talk to your doctor beforehand. Um... Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, drop a like, drop a sub down below, drop a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know what I can do to improve. And uh, thanks for staying plugged in. Peace out, boys.